Hey guys, welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name's Ryan, and with me today is my friend Brandy. Hey guys! Of Safari Encounters, and today we actually have a special treat for you, a cool animal that we haven't displayed yet. And Brandy, kind of tell us what we're looking at. Oh my gosh, okay, so I want to see if they can guess what it is, alright? This is an animal that doesn't have any teeth, and it has a 15 inch long tongue that's connected to his ribs. Hmm. So drop a comment below and see if you guys know what he is. Let's take a look. Oh, you are so messy. And what's his name? His name is Slurpee. Okay. You say hi to Ryan Slurpee. Check this. And Slurpee, this is not his normal diet. This is like a treat. It's actually baby food, which I wouldn't feed to a baby, but this animal yeah. is going to go nuts for him. And now his tongue is super long and super thin. I've actually held him before and he'll get right up to your face and try to go down your ears. It, it feels kind of weird, but it's a cool little animal. This is actually my favorite animal that Brandy owns. <laughs> he um, does a side business of cleaning people's brains, you know. He um, goes right in the ear. But um, Slurpee actually has a super cool story. So an anteater like this wouldn't make a great pet. Um, and there's several reasons. One, I wish you could smell through video, but this is the smelliest animal I have, hands down. What do you think? What does he smell like to you? You ever keep a dog in a crate inside and goes to the bathroom and you come home after like three hours? <laughs> That's kind of a little less than what he smells like. Oh uh, man, he he smells like mildew and I don't know, he kind of smells like weed honestly. Yeah. Um, and he is just the weirdest smelling animal. But other than just his smell, he's obviously very cute, but if you see these huge front claws, they're strong enough to break my finger if you wanted to. No, no problem. And Slurpee has a super cool story. Now you can't really tell right now, but he actually has like this scar that goes all the way around him. And when he's actually from Guyana, he's an import. Now normally we don't do imported animals, but um, he was actually accidentally caught in a hunting snare. Hmm. And um, they were not obviously hunting for baby tomatoes. <laughs> and so they um, took him to the local wildlife center, they rehabbed him, put him back in the wild. Well, he kept coming back. He wasn't able to be rehabbed because he liked that diet in captivity um, so he was unreleasable and they didn't have the resources or the facility to house an animal that's going to live for 20 something years there so um, Jeremiah my boyfriend actually imported him and saved his life knowing that you know most big zoos don't want an animal that's not the perfect example and the reason for that is if you visit a zoo and you have an animal with a scar your brain automatically goes to the worst possible you know scenario so um, knowing that you know he would never be able to be in a big zoo, um, he actually found a great place with us. Yeah, what flavor? Um, you this? know, that's beef and beef broth. Huh. You know, you can share it if you want. Yeah, I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but his claw is crazy. Kind of reminds me of like the Velociraptors from like Jurassic oh, World. Oh yeah. Where they like take on the floor. Could you imagine like just Tim in that movie versus <laughs> <laughs> they should replace it with Anteater. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be covered in this so Slurpee. Cool. And Slurpee's still gonna get a little bigger. He's still pretty young. He's like a year and a half old. So um, we don't know his exact age, obviously, but um, he's still gonna get pretty buff. Yeah. Now, what kind of care does Slurpee require that's like different from any anim other animals that you keep? So, um, like most of the animals that I have that would be native to South America, he needs a pretty warm, humid climate. Um, so he prefers it to be about 70 to 90 degrees, you know, 90 yeah. on the high side. And he's gonna like about 70% humidity. And it keeps his skin going nice and soft and not dry. And um, he's really loving the warm California summers we're having now. He said it's about time because he likes to go outside. We have an indoor and outdoor enclosure for him. That way he stays nice and you know comfortable all year round. Um, and like I said, he's gonna live a long, long time. But I've only had him for six months now, oh, wow. something like that. Yeah, he's still pretty new. He seems to be adjusting pretty well, especially oh, for being yeah. wild, caught like exactly. Wild. Yeah, yeah. He's he's you know probably one of the friendliest animals I have. He was like, I was made for this. He's like, I get hand fed. You know, I get toys and he definitely plays with toys he loves playing with the like mcdonald's toys mm. um and <laughs> oh like happy thank meals. Oh, he's you good, making a mess i think it's your turn to hold him yeah. and what kind of enclosure do you keep him in right now so he has a fairly large enclosure he likes to get around um especially when it's really warm please do not put that baby food hand on me <laughs> and so his enclosure is about um 16 feet high Wow. And um, I think it's like 23 feet long. Um, and that's just like his kind of you know normal thing. He's gonna get a bigger enclosure when he gets bigger. Um, that's just to keep him nice and exercised and 
Yeah, are you done already? He's over the baby food. Hey, Slurpee. Oh, he's gonna share his baby food gonna, with you. Yeah. <laughs> so he's actually got baby food all in his claws, and as soon as he tries to grab me, that's gonna be all over my arm. Like this right here, yeah. you know? You got, oh, and all over my jeans. Thanks, Slurpee. Now, for the people watching it back at home, clearly this is not a pet. I know he's cute, but Brandy, what are kind of the things that just look at him and be like, oh my god, I want one? Why should they not want one? Well, obviously, uh, we talked about the smell. Yeah. I mean, he is smelly. And most people are like, oh, that's okay. Like, he. No, like, I work with a wide variety of wildlife, and hands down, the worst smelling poop, the worst smelling just bean. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's also really sensitive. Like, they have a very sensitive um, stomach. They have a very sensitive diet. Finding a vet that can take care of these guys is, you know, hard enough. Oh, and you're gonna make me wash my couch? And this is cool. He's kinda got like a possum tail going on. Oh yeah, he's got a prehensile tail. He, they get into everything too. Like, he will destroy a wall. He will destroy anything that you put in front of him. Um, and, you know, he's just really hard to take care of. It's not like, you know, I could go on vacation and leave my dog with a friend. It's like him. Oh yeah, we're not gonna hide in the couch. See, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. oh, he just farted too. There you go. Here, there's Ryan. He's got a cool belly. There you go. Oh, plenty of dog food. Mm -hmm. or, oh, baby, baby food. food. That's human baby food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh there we go. <laughs> Completely gonna be covered in baby yeah. food. You're welcome. Thanks, Slurpee. <laughs> yeah. <going. laughs> so one thing I've learned already about Slurpee is if he's getting by your head, just go ahead and plug your ear because it definitely comes in handy. <laughs> and he's trying to get in my ear. Oh, you got baby food on your ear right now. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'll definitely be due for a shower when I get home. But yeah, like I said, Slurpee is definitely my favorite animal that Brandy owns. But he definitely comes with uh, a lot of special care that you need. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, it's really cool. These are actually the closest living relative of the sloth. Oh. Okay. So you gotta think it, that whole family, like Mother Nature's junk drawer, man. Like they are just weird. You got yeah. um, the armadillo. Mm. You got the ant eater, and he's the lesser ant eater. So there's um, the northern and southern tamandua, or tamandua yeah. is actually how they say it. I have the hip version apparently. Um, and then there's. Uh, the greater anteater, which is the ones that are on the ground, the big, you know, ones, um, and then, you know, the sloth. It's yeah. just really, really weird. I know it's hard, like, you can't even, like, whenever it goes in your ear, you can't help but, like, laugh. Because yeah, it just, like, sloth. feels... <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he's my... got some sharp nails, too, I'll tell you that, coming down my back. Hi. Hey, you want to eat some more of this? It's good. Yeah, there we go. Oh, he likes that. You just have to, like, give it to him again, and it's something new. And if you look at his tail, it legit looks like a possum tail. It's even got the spotting. Now, do you see like how he's digging in that too? Yeah. Um, so that's a natural behavior. So you know what an anteater's favorite food is? Uh, ants? Termites. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so they're gonna use those big claws yeah. to dig up a termite mound, which is really, really hard. Um, and that's, they'll constantly be digging. So and okay. his food in captivity is kind of looks like the same consistency of this. You know, you realize he doesn't have any teeth. Yeah. So he doesn't eat solid food and he doesn't eat any fruits or vegetables. Um, and so he is completely an insectivore. Um, so he... Oh, now is he a high protein diet then? High protein. Yeah. So um, his diet is actually specially formulated by Jeremiah who's had him in captivity successfully breeding for over 20 years. Oh wow. And so um, it's a big thing across zoos trying to find like a great diet for everything. Yeah. I don't want baby food. All I'm getting anyways. And now if you're wondering what his fur feels like, it feels like really thick, dense hair. Just super short and it's a little coarse to the touch actually. You actually have, baby, you have food from this morning on your nose. See that? <laughs> yeah. It almost reminds me of like tiger cub fur. Yeah. Like how it's super coarse and thick. Mm hmm. Hey, buddy. He says, um, are you gonna give me food? Here, look. There's like a towel that you could be on instead of me. Like, I'm over it. He also really likes honey. So let oh. me go get some honey while you play with him, and I will let him have that too. And I keep mentioning Jeremiah, what facility is he at? So Jeremiah actually um, owns one of the largest breeding facilities of sloths and ant eaters and stuff for big zoos. And um, he's actually based in Michigan, where my other outreach program is. Um, okay. And so, <laughs> what do you want? Oh, you don't want to destroy that. He's 
still have baby food. And so he's actually located in Michigan. He travels all around the country. Um, like I said, he's the one that saved this little guy's life by importing him, knowing that you know he might have to take care of him for the rest of his yeah. life too. So he um, does a really great job with all this. <laughs> his tongue is now sticky, so yeah. you can have that in your hair. <laughs> now it still amazes me that this was a wild animal. Like they, they caught it in a trap, and then he's just been so well adapted to captivity that I can actually hold him and we can feed him right out of our hands. It's, yeah. Now, what are these guys like in the wild? Is, has Jeremiah gone down there to yeah, see them? Yeah, yeah. So we go down there and study them, actually. Okay. Um, and he, um, in the wild, their main defense is they'll stand up on their back and they'll kind of swap. Now, like I said, that claw right there could go through my hand. Wow. Um, it's not something to, you know, mess around with. Um, now, Slurpee is just so tolerant yeah. that he just likes being around people. Um, and so, but like, they could be, you know, not like this. And I can't stress, yeah. not even every tamandua in the United States is like this. You know, it depends strictly, like animals just like people have different personalities. They like, dislike different things. Yeah. Serpy just happens to be super tolerant on everything. Huh. Hey, you got that? Oh, there's honey in that. Don't squeeze my finger. And then he's got pretty big ears, kind of like a deer. So are these uh, preyed upon by any animals? Yeah, animals? so I mean, they have a lot of predators. Um, and so these guys have a lot of predators. And um, you gotta think where they live in the jungle, they're gonna have jaguars, they're gonna have eagles, they're gonna have even some, maybe some big snakes. I don't know. Um, you know, these guys are gonna have a lot of different predators. I know, I don't have, you drop baby food all over my jeans and I don't want it to be there. Thank you. So they'll actually kind of stand up like that. He's not doing it, I'm making him do it. They'll stand up like that and then he'll kind of swat. Okay, so they'll kind of use their tail like a kangaroo. Yeah, kind of like a kangaroo and they'll just kind of stand up and they walk kind of funny too. Like that's normal walking. They walk on the sides of their hands. I always think that they look like um, a guy just got back from the gym, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you want this again? Now, like I said, the baby food isn't like a normal part of his diet. That's kind of like a treat that he gets. Okay. Um, and they go nuts for it. It helps me um, when I'm trying to clean his enclosure. You know, it helps me clean his enclosure without him constantly being into everything that yeah. I'm doing. Um, and so I can do what I need to do and then, you know, let him have that treat. And are they nocturnal? Um, you know what? These guys really aren't. Uh, they um, are more found during the day. I'm not saying they can't be found awake at night. It's not yeah. like one or the other, but definitely more during the day because they're going to need their vision to help find, you know, ants and termites mainly. Okay. Um, as well. Oh, you just wanted it out of the jar, huh? Good thing I was done with that. <laughs> and how big do you expect him to get? You know, he's going to put on another 10 pounds. Like, he's going to get pretty big. Oh. And how heavy would you say he is now? He is about four pounds right now. So, oh, so he's gonna like triple in size. Yeah, I'm not like probably double. Like double. he um he is gonna get more buff if that makes okay. sense. He's gonna fill out, and so that muscle is gonna weigh a lot. Yep. Um, so he's gonna get you know fairly large, but it's not really like just size. The great you know the great ant the land anters are huge. You yeah. know those are um, you know pig size where these guys. They're smaller. Yeah, and they're smaller. And okay. they can be found in the trees, but they're mainly found on the ground. Oh, that's what you wanted, is just the honey thing from that. If anybody ever wants to donate, like, honey. Honey. Like, we go through a lot that's of... That's a big ticket item. Oh, yeah. You know what? It's so expensive. Um, yeah. And so we normally just give them, like, 100% real organic honey. Um, but we, you know, a lot of times it's local or not. And he goes through it. Because um, honey is actually a part of what we put in his diet, too. Um, we put... Honey, we put a little bit of yogurt, we put some raw meat in there, we, you have baby food all yeah. over your hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he's got, you know, a lot of different stuff. Oh, and now we're going to be sticky too. This is just a little taste of how messy this hand was. <laughs> all right, falling off the table. And now you can really see his prehensile tail, how he hangs on to me. Look at that. Yeah. So these guys be found in the trees? They could find them be found in the trees, um, but they're mainly found on the ground. They okay. can climb to get away from predators, to, you know, stay cool, you know, um, but they're mainly found on the ground just because that's where their food source is for the most part. Um, and where they live, their ants and termites and insects in general are very high in vitamin K. Mm. Um, oh, that's a lovely fart that he just yeah. did. <laughs> and so um, we have to supplement him with a lot of different vitamins to actually keep him healthy and strong. Um, and so like vitamin K is the main one we have to, and that's what most of the animals from South America are all, you know, really vitamin K dependent and their body doesn't store it like most other animals. And so he needs a lot of it to stay nice and healthy. And he 
definitely enjoys like some of the enrichment stuff we do with him is we get like a PVC pipe and yeah. he's got we've got holes drilled into it and so he can like you know stick his tongue in try to find different treats or yeah that's now he has some high protein farts. Oh, yeah. I, like, I wish you could smell, have like smell a vision on um, YouTube. Because oh, that needs to be the next thing because then yeah. people will be like, you know what, I don't want one. Yeah. Just kidding. It's kind of like when people work out a lot and just like drink a lot of protein powder. Imagine that in this little body and it's all he eats is like high protein diet. And he doesn't go to the bathroom every day too. Yeah, like so, most of the animals in so this family, sense. it's yeah. like, you know, sloths go to the bathroom depending on how old they are once a week, once every three days. You know, he goes to the bathroom like once every other day. Oh wow. And so like when he goes, he goes. He goes. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're gonna need a bath. And he does get baths. Um, he likes playing in his pool. Like, so something I've done is I give him like a kiddie pool and I've got balls and stuff like that. I actually gave him one of those um, horse balls, like, you know, yeah. like for horses to kick around. He's got one. Um, no, I don't want my finger. Yeah, you can have the lid. Um, gosh, look at what he's done in just like a <laughs> few minutes. He's very uh, messy. <laughs> But yeah, so he's got all kinds of toys and he'll actually walk around in his little kiddie pool and actually kind of gives himself a bath, which oh. is really nice because yeah. most of the time I have to give him a bath and he just because he's so messy yeah. and then he'll like roll in it. Like imagine a dog that just rolls in everything. That's this. <laughs> All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Brandy, thanks so much for introducing us to Slurpee. Anytime. If you, if you want to hear more about uh, Brandy and, and what she does, her amazing outreach program, see more photos and pictures of Slurpee and her other amazing animals, where can they reach you? So um, on Instagram, my tag is Safari Brandy, and then I will have my own upcoming YouTube channel as well, which will be Safari Brandy as well. Um, and then, yeah, and then I also have public programs coming up too, so I have them all across the United States. Um, so you could, guys probably could come see Slurpee in person. <laughs> awesome, well if you liked today's video guys, uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.